점수 잡는 hackers. Let's move on to question number nine. So we have a person, and um, this person needs to screw with a width of 5 over 32 inches to repair the seat on the bicycle. And they're asking for the closest approximation in terms of millimeters. So once again, this is a simple unit conversion question. So let's just write it out. 5 over 32 is in terms of inches, and we're going to convert this in terms of millimeters and use the information they present. One milliliter is equivalent to 0 0.039 inches. And at the end, they just cross out. So you apply this, plug this into your calculator, and I think we do get a match. Correct answer is B. Did you guys all get this? OK, very good. So we have two questions referring to the common information. I mean, everything here is going to be expressed in the equation. So all you have to do is, if you wanted to solve this a little bit quickly, you just match up the variables. First of all, you're like, oh, what does P refer to? It's going to be the car's rating, MPG rating. And then M1, M2 are both going to refer to what? You have M2 mileage, M1, that's also mileage. And the final variable of G is going to be the gallons of fuel to refill this. And then you're like, OK, and then what? So if you read the first question, everything is rearranged in terms of the M1 variable. It's going to be one of those common questions that ask you to simplify this. OK, so if you move the numer denominator to the left hand side, you get the product of peach, right? That's equivalent to the difference of the numerator as it is. So if you want to write this in terms of M1 is equal to M2 minus PG, so you get C as your correct choice. OK? So question number 11, it seems very complicated, but at the end, it's just going to be using this equation. So let me just rewrite this here. Right? And remember what the variables mean. That's the fuel that we need to add. So when you go back to question number 11, M1, they give you the explicit value. M2 is also presented. And he calculates the fuel rating to be 24. What's G? You just plug this in. 24 is going to be M2, 110720 minus 110540, everything divided by G. And I think you guys can finish this up, right? You plug it into a calculator. You take the difference, divide it by 24, you swap places, right? And you get your final value of G. What do you guys get? 7.5, did you guys get that? OK, very good. So let's move on to question number 12. Let's read along and try to figure out what they're telling us. So we have three lines, E, F, G, and they're graphed in the x, y plane. First of all, they're telling us the slope of line E, slope relationship. It's going to be A. I don't know what that is, but a variable. And the slope for line F is 1 over A. And finally, the slope of line G is negative A. So which of the following correctly describes the relationship among the three lines? If you think carefully, when we went over the no calculator section in test one, I mentioned this briefly, right? Two parallel lines are going to have same slope value, and perpendicular lines are going to have what slope value? When you multiply, the product has to be a value of negative one. And you can see that none of these slopes actually match. So parallel actually does not make sense. So you have to choose from either A or C. And the perpendicular relationship is going to hold for lines F and G. And there's only one match. That's why the correct answer is C. OK? Question 13. So we have a systems, a system of linear equations. And um, x, comma, y is a solution. And they're asking for the specific value. What do you do? Should we multiply 2 for the top equation? So you get 0.5 of x, negative 2y is equal to 24. And let's just leave the second equation as it is. And what should we do here? If you subtract two equations, you're going to be left with negative 2.5y being equivalent to 24 minus 14. And you can find your y value here, right? So y is going to be 10 over negative 2.5. And you can get the equivalent expression of, what is that, negative 4? And I don't think you actually need to find your x value because we only have one match. So this is going to be the faster way of solving the question. OK? So moving on to the next set. 
So we can see that we have two questions referring to this common information, but the results are going to be simplified here. So you're like, okay, we have mammals, birds, amphibians, juveniles, adults, and the young ones and the older ones, the total for each category and the net sum presented here. You're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So you don't have to really read through this information. And when you go to the first question, they're like, oh, random sample of animals recorded in the table was tacked with a tracking marker. And what's the closest to the probability that any one of the animals, so among the total, they're asking for the probability that it was an adult, mammal, or juvenile bird. So what's going to be the denominator? 1371. And the specific category that we're interested in is going to be adult mammal. So how many are there? Adult mammals are 417. And what was the second one? Juvenile bird is going to be 119. So at the end, that's the fraction form that we need to simplify. Can you guys plug this into your calculator? And what do you guys get? Approximation of D, and that's your match. Okay? That wasn't too difficult. Let's move on to question 15. So let's just read along and see what they're presenting. Researchers conducted a second survey the following day. So the next day, they're like, oh, I'm going to do something new. Following the same procedure as the first survey and in the second one, the number of juvenile amphibians observed was actually 20% greater than the previous survey. So let's go back to our table real quick and see how many of the juvenile amphibians there were. Juvenile amphibians were 25. And when they're telling us that in the second sample they are 20% greater, you're going to multiply it by 1.2, right? This is referring to juvenile amphibians. And the second one, um, total number of amphibians observed was 10% less than the previous survey. It's not juvenile or adult. It's going to be the total number of amphibians. So going back to the table real quick, the total number of amphibians refers to a value of 80. And when there was a 10% decrease, we're only applying 90% of it. So total is 72. And as we can expect, how many adult amphibians were observed in the second survey? Juvenile, you add adult, it has to produce the total. So you do 72 minus that, and what do you guys get? Final value of 42, and that's your match. Does that make sense? Okay.